Bray. Today's discussion is going to be the historical origin of the Moors, the Moors in North Africa, Spain, the Vatican, and the Americas. And of course, our special guest is Dr. Walter Williams. He has a new book coming out called Dispelling the Myths of Ancient Egypt. And also, next week is his birthday, and he'll be 92 years old. So you definitely have to give him a hand and congratulate him on reaching such a, such a prestige age with such knowledge that he's still able to render. So, um, Dr. Williams, you can begin. Okay. Um, thanks for inviting me, uh, Brother Lane, to your broadcast. And uh, I'm going to begin my lecture, which is the topic of the lecture is the Moors of North Africa, Spain, the Vatican, and America. So, uh, first off, we're going to start as to uh, who the Moors are. The Moors are, is a nickname given to our ancient Egyptian ancestors by the Spanish. But I'll go into that and get into that when give you more details as I progress. So let's start with the Moors of North Africa. Um, in 1091, the Spanish uncivilized people asked the ancient Egyptians of North Africa to bring civilization to them in 1091. They ask ASK now, the ancient Egyptians of North Africa, to bring civilization to uncivilized Spanish-speaking people in Spain. So uh, let's go into where these countries are situated on the map of human geography. Egypt is in North Africa facing the Mediterranean Sea. You go west of Egypt, you get into Libya, which is in North Africa. And you go get into the next country is, is uh, Tunisia. Uh, and the next country is Algeria. The next country is Morocco. And the next country is Mauritania. Now, five of those countries faces the Mediterranean. The last one, Mauritania, faces the Atlantic Ocean. So now, the Moors, when they were asked by the uncivilized Spanish to come to uh, Spain to bring civilization, uh, they embarked on that trip by using the country that we know as Morocco. Why Morocco? Because of the uh, extension of land that extends from Morocco out into the Mediterranean. And that extension of land is called the Strait of Gibraltar. That man uh, connected to the Strait of Gibraltar will extend you closer to the shores of Spain. After you come to the end of the Strait of Gibraltar, which is attached to the country called Morocco, you have to take a boat and travel 8.9 miles to reach the shores of Spain. And once in Spain, the Spanish people called our African ancient Egyptian ancestors 
black amours, black amours. So that name more is a Spanish name that has a double meaning. Black in Spanish also translate and is synonymous with Negro. So black and Negro is one and the same. The first thing that our ancestors, the ancient Egyptians, did was to learn the Spanish language in order for them to communicate with the Spanish people. After learning this language, um, they set up a government in Spain for the Spanish-speaking people. That's the second thing they did. The third thing they did was they began to build all over Spain buildings and streets, etc. And those uh, cities are known today as Grenada, Seville, Cadillac, Toledo, etc. And the fourth thing that they did for the uncivilized Spanish people was to introduce to them public bathhouses. And in introducing public bathhouses, they introduced soap to these uncivilized Spanish people. So sometimes if you look at the History Channel, uh, the, the commentator on the History Channel will tell you that Soap was introduced into Europe for the first time in the 12th century, and that's true. And that was done by our ancestors, ancient Egyptians, under the name of Moor. Now, Moor, that name, is a nickname, okay, um, given to our ancient Egyptian ancestors by the Spanish. So remember that it's only a nickname given to our ancestors by the Spanish people of Spain. Now, uh, let's go to uh, the second uh, place that I want to take you to. And that is uh, in Italy. So now I've told you uh, about the Moors of North Africa, where they came from, who they are, and the name Moors on their nickname. So um, remember that. It's very, very important. Now we're going to come up to uh, the second phase of my um, narrative or narration. Uh, we're going to come up to the time when the seat of Christianity was moved out of northeast Africa, out of the double walled city of Constantinople. Constantinople today is called Istanbul, Turkey, and we're talking about northeast Africa, uh, also given a political name of the Middle East by uh, the British after World War One. Uh, so, in 1439, the seat of Christianity was moved out of Northeast Africa as, after it had been built uh, in Northeast Africa with the commission to be built by the Emperor Justinian I and his wife Theodora. They commissioned African builders and African architects to build the first seat of Christianity. And the first seat of Christianity uh, is, was the Hagia Sophia. That's the world's first Christian church ever built on planet Earth, the Hagia Sophia. And uh, that church, the Hagia Sophia, the first seat of Christianity, was built beginning in 532 
finished years later, and, and on December the 27th, 537. If you want to see a picture of the world's first Christian church, get my book, The Historical Origin of Islam. On the front cover is a picture of the Hagia Sophia. Okay? And uh, uh, my late wife uh, wrote a chapter in that book, The Historical Origin of, of Islam, entitled, What Happened to the Church of Hagia Sophia? And if you read that chapter, you'll get a, a good, thorough understanding of uh, what happened to that church. Now, in 1439, John VIII, the Byzantine emperor, uh, moved the seat of Christianity from Africa into Italy, 1439. He went to Italy and transferred that seat by way of relinquishing a document known in history as the Donation of Constantine. Now, the Donation of Constantine, you can find out about and what the Donation of Constantine is all about in my first book, The Historical Origin of Christianity. I believe it's in the beginning of the second chapter. Now, uh, he went to the Curia, John Nave, I'm talking about, releasing the, the world's first church into Israel. Went to, went to uh, Ferrara, Italy, and Florence, Israel. At the Curia's there, the word C-U-R-I-A, meaning college. So at the College of Florence, the College of Ferrara, he used the donation of Constantine to release the seat to be moved to Italy. And you had six humanists from each uh, college, from six from Florence and six, six from Ferrara. They uh, made themselves responsible to receive that seat. And uh, by them being responsible for, to receive that, the seat, meaning that they were responsible to build a church, which would become the second seat of Christianity. Now, they went to the authorities in Rome, these 12 uh, humanists, a humanist today would be considered as an intellectual. But back then, they were called humanists. So these 12 humanists went to the authorities in Rome and asked them for an allotment of land on the outskirts near the catacombs to build the second seat of Christianity. So... With that being given to them, they called to Spain for the Moors to come to Italy to build the seat of Christianity, the second seat of Christianity. So the Moors took their call and they went to Italy from Spain and uh, they began to build on the outskirts of, of, of Spain, I'm sorry, of Israel, near the catacomb, uh, St. Peter's Church, known today as St. Peter's Basilica. And uh, that was in 1445. They began, the Moors began to build this church, known today as St. Peter's uh, Church 
called St. Peter's Basilica. And uh, uh, when that was done, they, uh, well, meanwhile, while that was being done, uh, the Moors laid out and replicated the double wall city that the first church was housed. The first church, again, was uh, built in Northeast Africa, today called the Middle East, which is a political name given to that area of the world by the British after World War I. Now, uh, this seat and church that's over there now in Italy was a, it's nothing but a replica of the double wall city uh, that was housed the first church in Constantinople. Okay. So I know I'm repeating, but I'd rather repeat to make sure you get your notes uh, down right. So I'm giving you historical dates, time, people, places, and events. Now, while the Moors was building and replicating uh, this area to build a church after the one in Africa, uh, these humanists took boat loads, very important. They took boat loads of uh, artifacts out of that church uh, in Africa called the Hagia Sophia. They took boatloads out of there. They took, they took literature. They took art. They took gold and silver chalices. They took uh, furniture, rugs tables, lamps, everything. They took it back to Israel. Um, so the day, if you go over there, in Israel, uh, they have a Coptic uh, library over there with, with, the, with, the, with, the, with the manuscript that was produced by our ancestors in that first church. And they also have a Coptic museum which displays all of the uh, items sold out of the first church, the Hagia Sophia, that I mentioned. You will find that over there in that church. So, um, in, in 1453, Warmad II, an Ottoman Turk, took a, a cannon and blew a hole in the double wall city of Constantinople and entered that city and seized the city and the church. And uh, he turned it into a mosque, the first prototype mosque ever built or ever exhibited on planet Earth. And, and that uh, picture of that Hagia Sophia on the front cover of my historical origin of Islam book will show the church, the first church ever built, Hagia Sophia, and the minarets next to it. Okay? So now, over in Italy, while the Moors were in Italy, laying out uh, St. Peter's Church, known today as St. Peter's Basilica, they also built, in 1473, um, they built the residence where the Pope lived, 
today. And uh, that is the Sistine Chapel. They built the Sistine Chapel in 1473, and that's where the Pope today lives or makes his residence. And uh, they laid out in 1473 that uh, that place where uh, you'll find the Pope's residence, the Sistine Chapel. Again, I'm repeating myself. I know that, but it's better to repeat than. Not to say it at all, then you miss that his part of the history. Now, in the meantime, the Roman Catholic Church allied with the Spanish government uh, in 1478. Is it, uh, Isabella? And Ferdinand called for um, the, the, the first inquisition, called for an inquisition. Why did they call for the inquisition, 1478? They wanted to get rid of the Moors out of Spain and the Vatican. So this uh, uh, this was done again in 1478, called the Spanish and Roman Catholic Church Inquisition of 1478. Why was this done? Because they wanted to erase and eradicate all evidence that the, the Moors were in Spain, all evidence that the Moors were in the Vatican. They don't want the world to know that these African people known today as the ancient Egyptian uh, brought civilization to Spain and built the Vatican. That's over there now, it's connected to the Roman Catholic Church. They don't, want, they don't want the world to know that. So what happened was that uh, with the Spanish Inquisition, of 1478, they erased all evidence of uh, the laws being over there in those two places, in Spain and in the Vatican. That was done. Now, uh, after that was done, uh, they ran the Moors out of the Spain and the Vatican, and the Moors went into uh, France. France uh, borders Spain, next door neighbor. They went into Spain. I'm sorry, they went into France, and they uh, went and came back into North Africa and settled into uh, Italy, I'm sorry, into Egypt, Libya, Tunisia, Algeria, Morocco, and Mauritania. They came, they came back to the countries that they uh, left going to, to uh, Spain. Now, some of them went into Africa, into Mali, now, this is very, very important about Mali. While in Mali, the ancient, I'm sorry, the, the Moors began to buy land and build homes on the land. And, they, and with them coming out of, being run out of Spain, they bought hundreds and hundreds of teaching manuscripts that they used over in Spain to teach. Uh, the Spanish, the uncivilized Spanish people. So, uh, I look for 
27 years to find the University of Timbuktu. I'm looking for a brick and mortar building, but I couldn't find it. Okay. Oh, uh, then I found a magazine at a grocery store while I was in line to check out. And they had an article on uh, uh, on the secrets of Timbuktu. The secrets of Timbuktu is this. After examining and reading the magazine article, uh, the manuscripts, the hundreds and hundreds of manuscripts that they used to teach in Spain, now they have them over here in, in, in Timbuktu, Africa. And uh, those manuscripts, that's the University of Timbuktu. Those manuscripts that they used to teach the Spanish over in Spain, now they're over in Mali, a good home, and, uh, and bought land to build a home, and they bought those hundreds and hundreds of manuscripts, and the hundreds and hundreds of manuscripts is known as the University of Timbuktu. Then, from Mali, uh, these Moors went into Easter Island. Today, you find over in Easter Island those mega stone head of Africans' faces carved in stone over there. Okay. And then from that island, they went into, uh, they came to America. And they settled um, among the indigenous Indians over in this hemisphere. You see? So now they're over here in this hemisphere. Uh, and dispersing the moors out of Spain, Ferdinand and Isabella hired a ship owner by the name of Christopher Columbus. And he was hired to get rid of moors out of Spain also. So what happened, he got a boatload of, of, uh, of moors, put them on his ship, and sail, and he found himself ending up on the shores of a, a country that we call today America. That was in 1492, 127 years before the slave trade. The slave trade started in 1619, but this is this happened in 127 years before the 1619 slave trade, we're talking about 1492. So now in 1492, the Moors began to build and create civilization for this area of the world. Okay, this is the third civilization coming from uh, the ancient Egyptian. Okay, the first one, as you know, was in the continent of Africa in a country called Asia. Okay? And the second was in Spain. Now the third one is now in America. If an individual asks you, how do you know that the ancient Egyptian uh, was the first and oldest civilized people on planet Earth. I didn't say uh, the world's first oldest people on Earth. No, no, no. No one can tell you that. And I'll explain to you one day why. But anyway, uh, they were the first and oldest civilized people on Earth. And the reason why if a person asks you, how do you know that they were the world's first and oldest civilized people, you said because they created an alphabet. 
It was the first to create an alphabet. That's your answer. Okay? So now they're over here in America, living among the indigenous Indians of America. Um, and and they, for 127 years, set up civilization over in this hemisphere. Now, 127 years later, here comes uh, the slave trade, 1619. In 1619, uh, the founding fee of this country, called the fathers of this country, brought human beings out of Africa, North Africa, and put these human beings in slavery over this country called America. These human beings, the Africans, they were literate, educated men and women that they brought over here to put into and make slaves out of over in this country of, of the Americas. Okay? Now, they say that these Uh, inferior, uncivilized, spiritually dead, savage white people uh, forbid these Africans brought out of Africa to read and write. The reason why they forbid them to read and write is because they already knew how to read and write. But these white folks didn't know how to read and write themselves. So now, they had to get rid of the Moors again. So what they did, I'm talking about these founding thieves called the founding fathers that I mentioned, these savages. What they did was to put the enslaved Africans in 1619 and the Moors under one cover and called them both groups, Negroes. So today, as I speak, you have a, a race of people, a group of Africans, who has no land area ties to Africa, no language ties to Africa, and uh, no culture ties to Africa. However, they created their culture right here in America. Now, let me go back and tell you something else that no one is telling you this. The ancient Egyptians, our ancestors, who built the Great Pyramid and the Sphinx and brought civilization to the world by way of literacy, and from those uh, the literacy, which consists of the ABCs. When you go to school, the first thing you learn when you go to school is your ABCs. After you learn your ABCs, you go to read, write, and spell. You become literate. And that from the ABCs came the musical scale, the re mi so fa la ti do. So music also came from that, uh, from the ABC. So therefore, the ancient Egyptian females of ancient Egypt became the first musicians on earth. The very first musician on earth was an African female woman of ancient Egypt. So therefore, I'm going to tell you this. By them creating a civilization over in Africa, in ancient Egypt, during the time of antiquity, our ancestors, the ancient Egyptians, 
became a superior race, more so than any other race of people on earth. Now, you have 8 billion humans walking this earth of all races, creeds, and color. But here you have this one race of people who are superior, more so than any other race of people on earth, and that uh, was ancient Egyptians. Okay. Now, let's go back into America with ancient Egyptians uh, under the name of Negro. Today, as I speak, the Negro over in this hemisphere of the world creates a superior, uh, uh, a superior race over all other races of people. This Negro is superior over all other races of people of Earth, on Earth. The Negro brought in modern civilization, whereby our ancestors, ancient Egyptians, in, 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 in the kind of Africa and in Asia, brought in uh, uh, an antiquity civilization, civilization for antiquity, ancient times. Here in this country, uh, the Negro brought in modern civilization. There is a superior culture that he created over here, bringing in modern civilization. He did it with his music, his dance, creating all these different dances and genres of dancing and, 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 and uh, jazz, blues, Negro spiritual. Everything, uh, hip hop, and you name it, he modernized this this world by bringing in uh, modern civilization by being a superior uh, racial group over all other races of people on earth. So now, with that, my brothers and sisters, I will end my narration and narratives of the subject of the, the Moors of, 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 of North Africa, Spain, the Vatican, and America. I end that. So, Brother uh, Arlene, you have the floor. Yes. All right. Thank you, Dr. Williams. Appreciate that. That was excellent, excellent, excellent information. Information. Um, anyone have any questions? You can unmute yourself and ask the question right now. Yes, this is El Issa. Um, great um, information, knowledge. Not even information. Knowledge. Thank you so much. And my father's 92, turned 92 on March 8th, so much respect to you, Elder. Um, if everything was destroyed, <clears throat> they tell us in Luxembourg, you know, um, uh, uh, there were great fires. How did, if everything was destroyed, how do we have the, this knowledge? Where do we get it from? What was preserved? It was done by the only people who had an alphabet and reserved by those people that are known as the ancient Egyptians. The ancient Egyptians, our ancestors, are the only people on earth that had an alphabet to write with. So they reserved uh, the history that, that we know today out here, the ancient history. So that will be my answer to you. Thank you. I'll wait because I have some more questions. Oh, that's fine. Go ahead and ask. Okay, so <laughs> I think you really answered it because um, I was going to ask, while all this was going on, you know, elsewhere, what was going you know, uh, before they came before the nicknamed Moors came over here um, and civilized this area here or built up this area 
So, so we're not really tribesmen here. No, you're not indigenous here. You cannot be indigenous in two places. You can't be indigenous in Africa and over here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you got to be indigenous in one place. Yeah. So the and that's the indigenous Africa. people here are, are are who are they still you know our cousins are they the um, American Indians because then there's the Native American who's you know they say is you know basically from Siberia and is not indigenous here. Well, now I'll ask the question: Who are the people that's on the reservation that is called the Indian Reservation and supposed to be the indigenous Indian? Who are these people, and where do they come from? If they're not the indigenous people here, yeah, that's many, my question. Uh, many of the Moors say that they, um, other Moors say that they are from. Siberia, and they're not really, they're not really the true American Indian, which would be us. What year did they say that, and who said that now? Uh, just various others, uh, you know, throughout the years. Uh, there's quite a quite a well, number of folks that say it. Yeah, but you got to you got to you got to deal with information based on facts, not what they say. Or, or he said, or she said. You got to, when you present something, like I did, everything I did was based on facts. I didn't go around saying that he said this and they said this and all that. I gave you dates, time, people, places, and events. That's uh, human history. So you, in order to, to, to talk about a subject, you have to give me dates, time, people, places, events, and uh, other than that, you have nothing to go on. You have no facts to go on, you see? So what they're saying, uh, and I don't know who, who you said. You said they. I don't know who's they. Who is they saying this? And when did they say it? What year did they say it? You see, things like that. So... I, to be safe, if I were you, I will use the information that I gave and departed this evening on this broadcast. Take that information and uh, take it and study it, and you'll see where uh, this other, a lot Siberia or Liberia, whatever they're talking about, uh, it's not valid. So you don't want to go out in the world with information that is not based in facts. That's all I have to say to you. But if you want to ignore what I said, well, that's up to you. Yeah. That's my suggestion to you now. I'm not telling you what to do. Is Brother Hello? Out of medicine? Thank you, Elder. All right. Thank you, my dear. Am I heard? Who is this now? Yes, you are, brother. Yes, you are, um, Chief North Star. Continue on. Okay. I want to thank you very much for that information, Elder, and uh, thank you, Dr. Aline, for putting together this presentation. It's very enlightening. I, um, I'm piggybacking off of the, of the interest that just spoke because the same question was in my head in terms of who was here and those who were here before the Atlantic Ocean split up and turned into continents, there were those that were here during Pangaea. And who is those? The Lenape people who were, these are our brothers and sisters. These who is those? Who is what? Those. That were here, that were already here, that were coming in and yeah, out of I, here before. Yeah, this, who, who, before what now? Before, before, the, before the land split up, before you had the Atlantic Ocean, there were people coming, there were people that already had migrated over here 
and were here during the Pangea era. Or, or when, so where, when, where did they migrate from? You're talking about you're talking about Atlanta. You're talking about Atlanta uh, when that when that when that when that uh, happened, and so the 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 the, uh, the land split. There were people that were here. There were people that were over there, and so uh, we have to account for uh, those who were here during Pangea. And it's not easily provable. You cannot put date on that, but okay. you you do. You do have indigenous people here uh, who are Moors, who are the Lenape, who say they've always been here and will argue that right. and they do get their proof. I got you. I got you. Now, I heard you say Atlantis. Is that what you yes. said? Yes. Atlantis, there's never been no place called Atlantis. That's uh, mythology. That's all. They fed you some mythology called Atlantis. And they also gave you another um, mythology called Amura. Okay? That's never been Atlantis or Amura. That's all uh, mythology. So you cannot use mythology in place of human history based on facts. Look for facts. Facts are stronger than argument, more profound than reasoning, more dependable than opinions. Silence dispute. Supersedes predictions and facts always in the argument. But you got to have facts, not mythology. So that would be my answer to you, brother. Thanks for your call. What uh, um, the Olmecs, the Olmecs, uh, again, 17,000 years they walked across the Bering Strait, were here. They came out of uh, uh, West Africa, the Mindy tribe from West Africa. The proof is in the artifacts and the scarifications. These are people that were already here. These are the, these are the, the uh, we are the descendants of those people. And so it wasn't like uh, Moors migrated here. There were Moors already here, to my understanding. And not to dispute with you and your, and your education, uh, but uh, this, is, this is from my research and understanding. Okay, let me, let, me, let me tell you this, my brother. You heard me tell you, once the Spanish and Roman Catholic Church Inquisition took place in 1478 to get rid of the Moors out of Spain and the Vatican, uh, they began to disperse into various parts of North Africa, back where they came from. They began to uh, go into France, which, uh, which is a, a country that borders uh, Spain. I told you, and they came into Mali. And while in Mali, they bought land and, and, and built homes, and they bought out of Spain hundreds and hundreds of manuscripts that they taught uh, uh, the Spanish people out of, out of those manuscripts. And those manuscripts are uh, called the University of Timbuktu. Then I told you that uh, they also, these uh, uh, Moors from, from, from Mali came into uh, Easter Island where those uh, made of stone heads are carved in stone over there. And they did that carving of those stone heads. And then I told you they came to Africa and lived among the indigenous Indians. So when Christopher Columbus came over here in 1492, the Africans, some Africans were already here in the Americas, living among the indigenous Indians, okay, uh, of America. Also, yeah. let me tell you this, my brother. Let me tell you this. In Chicago, uh, about 10 years ago, they had an exhibit, uh, the Mexicans did. They had a museum uh, that they had an exhibit in the Mexicans, uh, in, in Chicago, in, in their community. Had a museum uh, that uh, had, uh, uh, they had a, uh, a museum of uh, 
the Africans present in America. Yes. You see? Yes. So, yes. so you have to go by facts and do your research and stop going by what he or she said, and that don't make sense. But anyway, my brother, thank you so much for your call. I appreciate it. All right. Um, yeah. Let me clear. Let me clear up some issues in which that some of y'all might need to um, have answered or addressed. All yeah. right. You have to get the book, The Hidden History of the Human Race, and also Forbidden Archaeology, written by Richard L. Thompson, Ph.D., and Michael A. Um, Creedmoor. And they state in the book that humans have been walking the earth for hundreds of millions of years. In yeah. fact, they state that um, a bell-shaped vase with exquisite carving was found in Dorchester, Massachusetts, right outside of Boston, showing that humanoid people has been in North America for at least 600 million years. And then um, archaeologist William Nevins discovered um, between 1894 to 1921, discovered ancient cities in Mexico, which, of course, Mexico is part of North America, that dated back to the beginning of the Pleistocene era, which was 2.5 million years ago. All right? So, and he found even older cities going further back than that. And then the question was asked, who lived in America 50,000 years ago and Colonel James Churchward um, answers the question and is verified by Professor Albert Goodyear III out of the University of South Carolina, and he states, new evidence put man in North America at least 50,000 years ago. So they're being very conservative with that information, but this is found in the Science Daily, November the 18th, 2004. And this is what Goodyear says. He says humans lived along the east bank of the Savannah River 50,000 years ago. The 51,700 years of North American site found in Allendale County, South Carolina, by the Savannah River, which is less than 30 miles from the Atlantic Ocean. The evidence for an ancient African migration came in multiple forms, skulls, skeletons, footprints in lava campsites, genetic M174 and D haplo group, linguistics, paintings, carvings, architecture, Egyptian writing. So Egyptian writing goes as far back as they know to over 50,000 years ago, and it was found here in North America. So this is at least 44,000 years. Um, years before the European Albion was even on the planet, because according to their own scientists, they just came into the present form that they're in 6,000 years ago. I just and want to say that for say which issue you know, that will be help clear up. Brother Lane. Thank Brother you, Lane. Thank you. Brother Lane. Thank you, my brother, for your yeah. call. Brother Lane. Oh. Um, Please do not, I mean, this is your show, but I laid out uh, facts. You cannot go beyond 10,000 B.C. You can't go beyond that. You can't go about 25,000 B.C. and 50,000 B.C. Don't do that. Those, don't, don't mention any books. That my teaching that, I'm going, that I've taught and teach, trying to teach our people, out of the confusion that they in. So what you did, I'm, I'm not chastising you, but what you did was you added more confusion on top of a, a confused people. I'm on here to bring information that are factual. So don't, uh, I would suggest, I'm not telling you what to do. You can do what you want to do. It's your show. Uh, do not bring other information other than what I'm teaching uh, on this show. Uh, let the audience bring it. So you cannot go beyond 10,000 B.C. If you, you go beyond 10,000 B.C., then you, where are you? What alphabet did these people use 50,000 years ago? 
and all that. Well, well, they lived 50,000 years ago. So forth and so on. So that's adding confusion. It sounds good, but it's confusion. It's not, these people who write these books, they, you know, you don't know what their intent is for. My intent to come on here is to straighten up all the lies and misinformation that has been fed into our community over the a period of time, over a period of years. See, so uh, if you don't mind now, you won't, when I'm on, uh, don't bring up any references that my teaching be what it is because I'm going to move our community out of this ignorance. I'm not saying that they're ignorant. I'm ignorant too. I don't know everything. Walter Williams does not know everything. I know only one person that knows everything, and that's a damn fool. A fool knows everything because you can't tell him nothing. See, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a perpetual student. I uh, have to evolve. I cannot keep revolving. I have to evolve into new knowledge. And to do that, you have to continue to study. So therefore, you will never know one will never know everything. I try to learn everything I uh, can about the subject that I'm bringing to uh, our African community. The information I'm bringing to our African community is for us, our Africans, to do better. I want you, I want you to go back into Africa, into Egypt, and, and claim our greatness that's lying unclaimed in the of Africa, waiting for the descendants of the Africans uh, to come back into Egypt and claim their greatness, which is lying unclaimed in the continent of Africa. So to keep all this confusion down, uh, uh, I would appreciate if you don't reference any books because that's adding confusion on top of confusion, and that's against what I've been I'm teaching. You see? No, so, is that okay? I, I, don't mean, yeah, I just I'm have one more take, comment. I just have one more comment, and then I'll I'll, uh, I'll yield. And this is to uh, okay. you, Doctor. You, got, um, uh, I regard you as one of the most brilliant investigators of human history that we have. One of the most brilliant, um, and and uh, you know, right there, side by side, or or maybe above Taj, you know, and so. Um, I I, uh, I respect the information that you dig up, and uh, because of that, to excuse myself uh, from this call, not be it, everyone on the call is long. Is long. It's long, brother. Do you have any questions, Hello. brother Fahim? Chief Fahim. Or uh, comment? Yeah. Uh, uh, I don't have any questions. I'd just like to give him uh, uh, Dr. Walter Williams just uh, honors and everything that of his research of Egyptian history and, and uh, things like that. Uh, uh, that's just about it, really. Uh, I'm just glad to sit there, uh, hear you again. I haven't heard from you in a while and everything. Yes, I'm glad to hear your voice too, Brother Fahim. Thank right. you. No problem, brother. Let me uh, tell you this, brother Fahim, and uh, and the rest of the listening audience is this: never associate and call our ancestors Egyptian. Don't do that, because what you have over in Egypt okay. today is some uh, some some white-looking faces. They are Arabs, white folks, and all other non-African mixtures is over there today. So we don't want to. We want to make a distinction. We say that uh, call ourselves African, ancient Egyptian. That makes a distinction. You see? Right. So uh, I just thought I'll throw that out at you, and uh, you know. Appreciate now it. the next time I come on, the next time I come on this program. I'm gonna bring because I every time if you if you want me to every time I come on your program as you invite me on 
I will bring you a history lesson. And the next history lesson I will present on your platform and forum, Brother Elaine, is uh, uh, it's the five steps towards liberation of the African born in the United States of America. Along with that uh, teaching the five steps, I will teach you the four races of man, the four races of man, uh, which will go along with that uh, five steps uh, of African, of, of liberation for the Africans born in America. So that will be my um, second narrated lecture that I hope to give on your program, if you allow me to do that. And like I said before, I only want to come on once a month, just one time every month. And, I, and when you hear the name Walter Williams, I'm going to bring you something that, has, that is knowledge-based, okay, based on facts. Not what he said or they said or this book said and so forth and so on. Yeah, I've read a lot of books, yes. I've read plenty of books. But I don't agree with everything that I read in the book. Okay? Uh, it, it causes me to think. So that's how I'm, I'm, I'm a researcher, a thinker, and a historian, and so forth and so on. But I, I want to bring the facts to our uh, African uh, group living in America today in order to enhance their growth. You must grow because this European has taught us away from ancient Egypt. Why? Because uh, it's a race war. Um, a brother asked my, my late wife, said, Miss Williams, why did the white man put us into slavery? And her answer was, because we are descendants of ancient Egyptians. And that's a, a, little, a powerful answer. We are descendants of ancient Egyptians. So now, we're going to keep ancient Egypt in our psyche, in our consciousness. And that is the goal where I want my people to go back and claim our, your greatness, claim our greatness. Claim and recognize our ancestors who had the most superior civilization more so than any other race of people on earth. Like I said before, you've got 8 billion humans walking this earth of all races, creeds, and color. But no race of people can tell you or show you anything from their culture or country that's greater than uh, what's already been built in ancient Egypt. So that's what I have to say, my brother. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I wasn't trying to um, go against anything which that you stated. I was just trying to correlate the information for the brother. Um, one of the questions on which that I also had was the fact of that um, a study and research as well that I've read, Ramesses the Third, Father of Ancient America, um, by um, R. A. Um, Gerasboy, um, in which that talked about Ramesses the Third expedition here to the Americas around 1200 B.C., which correlated to the time of the Olmecs being here. And when my wife and I went to Mexico um, back in 2013. Our tour guide was an archaeologist, and he told us that the um, mounds, the pyramids, in which that was, and the temples that was built um, throughout Mexico, um, South America, Mexico, and into the interior of um, America or North America, or in the United States, as they would say, um, was done by the Omex, and the Omex was Nubian Egyptians. And he said persistently that we are the descendants of these Nubian Egyptians, so that correlates perfectly with what you um, all stated. Well, let me let me tell you this, uh, my brother, is this. Uh, 
Danubian and the ancient Egyptians are one and the same. Okay? Right. Uh, I told you that after the stench in Roman Catholic Church Inquisition, where uh, they got rid of the Moors out of Spain and out of the Vatican, that they ran, some of them ran into France, which borders uh, Spain, and, 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 and a lot of them ran back into North Africa and countries that I mentioned, such as Egypt and uh, Libya and Tunisia, Algeria, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, I, I told you that they came to Mali, and I gave you a very key piece of information. I don't want you to miss it. I told you that while in Mali, after the Spanish Inquisition dispersed the Moors out of Spain, the, the Moors bought land and they bought uh, to build homes on. And they bought hundreds and hundreds of manuscripts coming out of Spain that they taught the Spanish people uh, out of. Those manuscripts, I told you that I had, I, uh, I had looked for many years for, the, for the, the University of Timbuktu. Uh, I looked for many years, in fact, 27 years, to find out uh, about the University of Timbuktu. I was looking for a university like we know today of brick and mortar, but it's, that wasn't it. It's the, those manuscripts. That's, that's what I want you to get and learn from my narration and teaching this evening. That those manuscripts that the boys brought out of Spain, they are the University of Timbuktu. Not no brick and mortar, because you're not going to find it. So that was a piece of key information, and I don't want you to miss it. I said that they, they, they that those, those, those Moors into, left Mali, some of them left Mali, and went into Easter Island, where those mega stone heads was developed. And they're still over there, and I told you from Easter, from Easter Island, they came into America, where they settled among the indigenous Indians over here. So when Columbus came over in this hemisphere, he found the Native American in uh, this country we call America, and also he found Africans living here. Okay? Now, let's go back to what you said about uh, the pyramids in, in Mexico. I also went to those pyramids. Remember, there's only one group of people that know how to build pyramids. And you have to know mathematics to do that. You can't just throw up a pyramid and, 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 and hope it will stand. you got to use mathematics to do that. Okay? I went to those pyramids. They are not a pyramid. They're not like uh, what's on the back of your bill. The greatest monument you carry around in your wallet every day that you live, and that's the dollar bill. On the back of the dollar bill that you carry in your wallet, purses, and pocketbooks every day is a picture of the Great Pyramid of Egypt, ancient Egypt. And also on that dollar bill is a seal of America, which is this, which is a, 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 the eagle bird. That's from ancient Egypt also, you see. So I don't have too much uh, respect for, I put it like this, I don't have uh, that much caring for those pyramids over there in Mexico. I mean, yeah, you can call them pyramids. I don't call them pyramids, but if an individual want to name them pyramids, I can't, I can't help that. So that's what I have to say about that, my brother.
Okay. Are there any other questions, comments? Yes, I would actually like to know the name of that first book that you mentioned. To me? Oh, to Aline. Aline. Dr. Aline, uh, you said forbidden archaeology, but there was one before that. Yeah, forbidden archaeology. Um, hidden history of the human race. Hidden history of the human race. And what... Um, yeah, hidden history of the human race. And then you said there's uh, Science Daily. Is that November 18th, 2014? Yeah, that was an article. Okay. 20, in 2014. All right. Um, Dr. Walter Williams, um, when is your book coming out, your new book? My new book will be out. How can we get it? Before the year. It's out. It, it, it's over with. Well, I, I'll tell you all that when it comes out. I don't know it right now. You know, you, I have uh, I have uh, distributors out there. I have the African World uh, Press, brother uh, Nati out of Baltimore, Maryland. I have a, a Luther Moore out of uh, Chicago, Lucina Books one of my distributors, and I also have a brother by the name of BJ out of the north side of uh, of Chicago. He's one of my distributors also. But So when that book comes out, it's going to be a very dynamite book because I, I deal with dates only. Dates is very important. I don't deal with a lot of, uh, uh, you know, people telling me about, Something happened 50,000 B.C. You can't sustain that. Okay? So now, if you want to listen to me, or you want to, which is okay. If you don't want to listen to me, fine. That's beautiful. Fine. If you want to listen to them, that's fine. I will try to bring you the true facts uh, as I see them by way of research. Now, the next time, like I said before, if I'm honored to come back on your show, I will give a narrative lecture on the five steps of African liberation for the Africans born in the United States of America. And I will also, along with that, I will give you and lay out the, 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 the table of races. Okay, um, and as uh, that way you can have a foundation of what is going on um, in the world around you, okay, and how it came about and so forth and so on. In the five steps of liberation for the Africans born in America, the first thing that I teach you is about your own personal humanity. The reason why people get hooked up and hung up and confused and all this confusion out here is that they don't know who they are as a human being. So I break all that down about your pineal gland and uh, your own personal universe and where's your pineal gland and things like that. Then I will teach you about uh, uh, religion, where they came from, and about God, and who is God, and stuff like that. Who I'll teach you about about the, the European race, okay? I will also teach you about the ancient Egyptians, our ancestors. So that will be our next topic next time. So. Let's not complicate things so much, you know, uh, because, you know, either you listen to me or you listen to them. Tell you about all these other things about fishing in B.C. and, and the, uh, the pyramid over in, in, the, uh, in Mexico and so forth and so on, okay? So anyway, 
That's what I have to say to that, brother. I mean. All right, all right. Um, any other questions? You can unmute yourself and ask the question if you have any. Okay, look like um questions been in um the questions that's been answered, um, Dr. Williams. And of course we're gonna have you on again. Um next month, um, as he said, once a month. So next month we will put out another flyer in order to make sure that we bring Dr. Walter Williams back on. Cause this is one of the um most educated historians um that we still have that's walking the face of the planet Earth right now. As he already stated there's never a man by the name of Jesus Christ or Muhammad ever walked the face of the planet Earth. Well, we got a man right now who's walking the face of the planet Earth, um, who's 90, getting ready to turn 92 years old. So we have to respect our elders and make sure that he gives us as much information as possible so that we can continue moving forward the best way that we can. So um, I appreciate y'all for coming on, um, listening, checking this out. And um, I'm going to say Maya Hotep. Okay, I said one more thing, uh, Brother Celine. Can I say one more yes. thing? Yes, in closing comments. Yes. yes. I want to I want to tell the people where they can buy my two books. The historical origin of Christianity. Oh. I'm saying on in the thesis yes. of that book there's never been a man that walked to earth in human form or been erased through the color by the name of Jesus Christ never existed, right on the front cover. Okay? Also in that book, yes, I got uh, a chapter in there on why the meta nature hieroglyphics has never been deciphered, and you should read that. Oh, Very important. Okay. And, I'll check and that then, out. and in my second book, the history of, of, of Christianity, it's been out 20 years. The first book has been out for 30 years. Uh, the history of origin of Islam, I'm saying there's never been a man that will walk to earth in the form of Islamic tradition by the name of a prophet Muhammad. You see? And uh, in that book, uh, the Muhammad book, I give you, um, I give you the, the first Meaning in Islam's history was 1926. And I give you all the minutes of that meeting that took place. That meeting was called by the first king of, uh, of Arabia, Abdul Aziz al Saud. He called that meeting for the first time in Islam's history in 1926. And I got it in my, my book, Historical Origin of Christianity, I mean, of Islam. It's very important for you to read these books. And I'm not trying to sell you books. If you don't want to buy them, that's up to you. I don't make a living selling books. I only wrote books for one race of people, and that's you, my people, that I'm writing these books for. Now, let me give you a little, a little a peek into my new book. Like Brother uh, Aleem said, that I'm 92 years old, and everything you hear me speak of about history is coming from my mind, not notes. I have to remember all of this. Now, I have a chapter in there called Civilization, the Ancient Egyptians, African Gift to the World. Civilization the African ancient Egyptians gift to the world. And I tell you about what our ancestors had created all during and uh, uh, bringing civilization to the world. The next chapter after that, this is very important, it's called Death and Destruction. The Europeans, in parentheses, white people's gift to the world. That's it to them. Okay? Now, I'll say this, and then I'll get off. What they have brought to the world, 
the Europeans. It's lies, deceit, murder, injustice, corruption, greed, terrorism, militarism, sexism, racism, slavery, exploitation, misery, evilness, genocide, hypocrisy, uh, disease, uh, drugs. Death and destruction, it brought cheating, stealing, suffering. They brought um, war uh, and, and guns and bombs and bullets to this world. And they brought violence. They brought plundering. They brought torture. They brought rape. Hate, white supremacy, white superiority, religion, mythology, and perverted scholarship. All that came out of my, my mind with no notes. And that's what they brought to this world. And you're going to read that in my book. My new book's coming out. It's going to be a dynamite book, and I hope. And it's going to change direction of the minds of, of our people. Okay? I'm bringing you facts. I don't blame them what, what he said or she said. It's facts, which is stronger than argument, more profound than reasoning, more dependable than opinions. Silence disputes, supersedes predictions, and facts always in the argument. So, my brothers, next time we're going to have a, another good lesson in uh, our subject matter that will help us. Uh, uh, resurrect ourselves uh, back to ancient Egypt. Does that mean? Excellent, excellent. Dr. Williams, um, African World Press, African World Books is where we can um, get your um, two previous books, Historical Origin of Islam, Historical Origin of Christianity, or, yes, you can get it from, from African World Books, Brother Nati, or you can go on Amazon and get it, my two, my two books. All right. And, and if you want All to get right. rare That's books, true. if you want to get some rare books and uh, hard-to-find books, you call my, my brother in Chicago here by the name of Yoel, and you call Yoel, and he will find you any hard-to-find books or rare books, and his phone number is 773-768-8869, 773-768-8869. Brother Yoel, he can find you uh, uh, hard to find or rare books, okay? And if you want to, uh, can I leave my home phone number? Brother Colleen? Yes. Uh, if you want to contact me further, you can contact me uh, at area code 773 947 8662. Again, contact Walter Williams. You can call me at area code 7. Seven three nine four seven eight six six two. And I'll be glad to talk with you and try to answer every uh, any question that you may have if I know the answer. So thank with you, that you, being you, said, you. you're welcome, Brother Lee. Thank you for inviting me, I, and and you and your wife, uh, sister. Uh, Cordelia, and uh, my, my, what was that? And uh, and brother Fahim, uh, thank you all for inviting me to uh, present what I have to say to my people and to my people, my African people. I love you. I love you. I love you. And I love you. And.
to our African women, uh, you are the most precious humans on earth. The women are the most precious humans on, on earth, and you must respect them and give them their due because Indeed. Uh, humans will not be here if it went for the, for the, for the female. Uh, receiving the egg of the male and incubating that egg for nine months. Now, you think of this. For nine months, she incubated that egg in her womb for nine months. She nurtured it, you know, uh, by way of her umbilical cord. And the umbilical cord gave uh, food, water, and air for nine months to that unborn child until it came into this world as a human being. So she's special. And to all you sisters out there, I love you. I really do. Okay? And that's, and you brothers, too. I love you brothers, too, like I said. So I just love my African people, period. I can't help that. I can't help it. That's the way it is with me. So thank you again for having me, and I hope to see you next time. All right. My asshole chat. My asshole chat. We out of here, y'all. Peace. Brother Joshua, you had a question? I have a question. For the elder. Yes. For the elder. So how do we get our, our oh, sisters? He... he already left. Yes, he just he just hung up. Okay, so you know, for you know, this discussion for us, that's fine. He'll be back. Um, right. How, how do we get our sisters, especially our young sisters, to to begin to respect themselves again and um, carry themselves as queens and empresses that you know we are? And get the brothers to respect them as well, and vice versa, the sisters to respect the brothers as well. Right. Well, everything deals with psychology, the mental. So proper education has to be provided. Um, morality has to be provided. And with proper education and morality comes forth the ability in order to make the proper or right and wrong, all wrong decisions. And um, with the proper guidance, they can have the uh, right guidance and do things that's correct and right, you know, but without the proper guidance, and that's what they're lacking right now, um, that they have no guidance. Uh, it's not like when we grew up, like, I would get chastised if I did something wrong, not just by my um, mother, but my grandmother, my great-grandmother. Um, shoot, they'll call their um, other family members down the road, and I get chastised about it again. Um, by them, you know, so it takes a village to raise a child. And what it is that we got away from a village type of mentality um, because we became so independent uh, with the women saying on one hand that I don't need a man and so forth and so on, and then men not being able to come into the home um, because um, they might have to receive benefits from the government, and then the men not accepting their responsibility to live up to taking care of the child, and we don't have the village. You know, when I was growing up, um, it was my mother, my grandmother, my great grandmother, my great grand aunts, my uncle Abel, my great uncle Abel, my uncle Willie, my uncle, uh, uh, <laughs> uncle um, uh, 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 Raymond. You know, and they raised me. You know, they they told me what was right, what was wrong. You know, so we got to get back to those type of traditions, family values. I didn't have a question. I just wanted to uh, acknowledge encouragement behind what I heard and experienced tonight. Okay. All right. Well, he'll be back on next month, inshallah, hopefully. Um, he is 92, so, you know, uh, he coming from his perspective, then we have to respect that um, as he's one of the elders. 
as he stated, he don't know everything, but what he does know, he know. Um, so that's just what it is. So we get and gather from what he knows, and then we start adding to it as we are a new generation. All right? So don't be offended by anything which that he stated. I'm not. Um, I'm happy because um, I already know um, how um, Dr. Walter Williams moved. Um, as well as um, Brother Fahim knows, Chief Fahim knows as well, because we've interviewed him many times on our radio show. Um, so he was um, one of the old heads, as we would say, um, that would come on the radio show and and get it in, you know. So um, we love him for that, and we respect him for that, and um, we cherish him for that. And so um, we'll see him again next month, inshallah. And um, we're out of here, y'all. Peace. Peace. Yeah, they watch to each. Peace.